Does it mean that I'm listening to you? You, Kyrie, and, <laughs> um, and 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 really looking at you know the, the politics of the country and I'm no politics. You know, many people, basically many people are saying that the prime minister, the previous prime minister, this prime minister's greatest enemy is the party. AMNO is his greatest enemy and greatest resistance to reform. And it seems that the Prime Minister, instead of appealing to the, I don't know, 72% or 74% that supports his reform agenda, seems to be listening to Ibrahim Ali and Pakasa and the AMNO. So, so many people are actually saying that the only way AMNO can change if, is, if AMNO is to lose power. That's the only way. That is the jolt that AMNO needs because after 1999, you know, then 2004, Bala comes in promising change and then he was not able to deliver the change and then 2008 happened and a terrible result. Najib comes in offering change and you see him backtracking all the time and listening to whose voice? The voice of the right wing racist, um, you know, agenda instead of a national agenda that he says he stands for. So that is the frustration that people feel. And that, uh, well, my question is, does Amro need to lose a government before it can really change? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> thanks, Adijan, for the uh, difficult question. Um, I don't think Amro needs to lose power uh, to change. And I certainly hope not, as, as an Amro person. Um, I think the result of 2008 uh, is enough of a wake-up call to us. I mean, losing five states plus uh, KL, uh, losing our two-thirds majority, that should be enough. We don't have to go the way of LDP, Goka, Congress, Kuomintang, uh, to reform. I mean, that's just crazy to say that you need to lose before you have to change. We have to do it now. And, but I, I think we have to be fair to the Prime Minister. Look, it's not going to be easy to move the entire party to the centre, which is essentially what the top line is all about. It's going to be difficult, and he can't be outflanked. The last thing that I want to happen to Prime Minister is for him to be outflanked. So this means not appeasement, not co-option, but he needs to spend some quality face time with the right wing. And that's not because he's caving in, because he's actually trying to show that he's listened to them and at the end of the day he's going to make his decision. I think if he, dis if he goes and decides something and they have a just cause to say he didn't even want to listen to us. Then they're going to go off to their patron saying, you know, hula. And they're going to complain, and patron saying, you're going to come out, and speak, and, you know. And, uh, you know, we have it all over again. That's why he has to do what he has to do. But I'm, again, I'm not saying that he's caving in. He hasn't caved in. I think his commitment is very much centrist. And I'm there. I'm not saying I'm the only person there. I'm not saying that I'm the only one there doing this. But I'm there to say, look, uh, sir, you have me for whatever it's worth. And if you want a counterfoil against the Ibrahim Ali's of the world, against the Picasso's of the world, even against Mr. Patron Saint of the world, I'm there. Because uh, I think the party can reform. I'll just give you one example, one short example. It's all business about, uh, at first, after the general elections, I was like, oh, kalau macam ni susah nak dapat pemudi China. We might as well focus on the Malay votes. Penyatuan Melayu, you know, Malay unity. That's why there's flirtations with uh, PAS, you know, even I was excited about that. <laughs> but then I realized that Malay unity is like chasing a chimera, it's chasing a phoenix in the sky. It's not going to happen. Because the Malays are not disunited, they just have political views that are different. There's nothing wrong with that. So uh, there's two, and the, 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 the point I'm trying to make is that the PM and me at the youth level, we've been saying, look, there are two things that we need to do. One, on an instrumental basis. If we don't go after the normal votes and change ourselves so that the normal votes support us, then we're going to lose the election. That's the instrumental value of changing. The intrinsic value of changing is that it's the right thing to do. You can't be this party that is monoglot, monoethnic, and only appeal to one group of people because that's the wrong thing to do. So uh, I think, I think uh, it's happening. And I think as long as the PM feels that he has the support, uh, to continue to do this, I think we can succeed. But, you know, you're going to see him meeting up with the Picassos of the world? Yes, because I don't want him to be out time. And as long as he doesn't deviate from the script, I think we're going to be fine. Okay. Kari seems to be a whole lot more optimistic than I think half the room is about Amno's <laughs> ability to change.